አዎ ሽላም ራስ ተፈሪ እኔ ወንድም ያድን ራስ ያድነው ተፈሪ this is your brother yadin and we want to continue on this particular theme of kedus georgis of saint george the patron saint of ethiopia as well as the patron saint of great britain now, there's a very interesting connection between uh Kedusky Argus and many of you all may be familiar and should be familiar with um Lala Bella or Lala Bella as well the connection with Lala Bella and the and the rock hewn churches the 11 rock hewn churches and here you're seeing um Ethiopian the Ethiopian Mitmanon the faithful right here praying around uh, Kedus Georgis or St. George, the rock-hewn church that's in the shape of a cross, one of the 11 rock-hewn churches in the Lalbella, 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 Albella, do not eat. Uh, this is connected with the narrative um, <clears throat> concerning Lalbella or Lalibella and when he was born and the and the bee the bees incident now this picture according to the information here was taken september 16th uh, 2007 now this is a ancient ethiopian ethiopic uh, holy site and it draws tens of thousands of foreign tourists every year as well as the faithful who go there in due season now, according to the legend of uh, Lalibella or Lalbella, that the angels, angels helped King Lalibella build the churches in and around the 11th or 12th century after he had received Mechabel, Kabbalah, and order, or to his eyes, by Egeziyabi Herlotu Subhat, by Yahweh, by the true God of Israel to create a new Jerusalem, Adesiti to Jerusalem, Jerusalem in Ethiopia, in Ethiopia. Now, this picture was taken uh, September, said to have been taken September 16th, 2007, and that's also significant, 2007, because that's the true um, time of the real new year or the real new millennium the new millennium um seven years after the the counterfeit millennium or the millennium that the world has been um you know remember that was bible says uh they shall seek to change laws and times in the book of Daniel. so people believe that 2000 and 2000 was the the new millennium and there was a lot of that's the world but according to the truth September 11th, um, or actually 12th, 2007, was the real new millennium. And for those who have eyes to see, there's a lot of uh, mundane or worldly signs that um, back that up and prove it. Now, this is another picture as well, just showing you some of the pictures of the Ethiopian Mitmanon, the faithful, who make pilgrimages to pray and to meditate in that holy site at that particular holy site and those holy sites in Ethiopia. This is also another picture of um, uh, Lali Bella and the Rock Hewn Church or Kedus Georgis. Kedus Georgis, Beta Christian, and this is also another picture um, right here. And I think that's the last in this series right here. So we should keep in mind when we explore Kedus Georgis or, or St. George. Now, what I wanted to do was to just share with the brothers and sisters, and this is also another painting or drawing um, of St. George according to the Ethiopics, St. George. Now, there's a video out there. Some of y'all may have seen it. I think it's on the YouTubes, and you can find it on the Internet here and there. And we might also have uh, videos, you know, videos 
as well available on what's his name? Uh, uh, I keep saying, I think I'm Nicodemus, Nostradamus, Nostradamus, the Nostradamus prophecies in 2012, Nostradamus prophecy in 2012, and. If we would study these paintings and study these drawings as well, there's a lot of symbology that has yet to be properly interpreted, even down here with these, with with the dragon. You see St. George slaying or conquering the dragon. And this reminds me of the Ophiuchus, Ophiuchus constellation and the dark rift. There's that point of the dark riff. Now here we see the coils in the serpent's body down here. And all of this has an interpretive significance as well, including the point at which um, the dragon is being conquered or slain. Now this is a more modern rendition of Kedamawi Haile Selassie as the Satan Bruiser. The Satan Bruiser as well, and here the point is at the heart, is at the heart of the dragon. And now, let's just go forward with this and get into the story, at least the story behind St. George. Now, this is from one of the older um, Bible encyclopedias um, on St. George. And let's go through this. So St. George, it's not known when he was born, when uh, Caduceus Georgis was was born, but it was it's it's believed that um, or accepted by the early Christians that he was martyred in two thousand in three thousand and three in three thousand and three. I want to show you this. Just thought of this actually. I don't know if this will come out very clear. This particular book. We'll get into this. This is one of the Ethiopian. Um, Delta sign or Ders of the Delta sign, the Ethiopic midrashes on um, Kedus Georgis. Anyway, he was martyred in 303, in 303 A.D. He is known popularly as the patron saint of England. Now, according to His Majesty and the Independence Day speech, um, May 5th. In 1941, His Majesty mentions both how Caduceus Georgis or St. George is the patron saint of Ethiopia and her allies. And we made a point in the video that we had posted a little bit earlier, the connection with St. George in England and St. George in Ethiopia as being the patron saint of these two particular countries that have a particular historic relation is through the black nobility, what's known as the black nobility or the secret black blood in the European monarchies. But let's go through this right here. The patron saint, he's the patron saint of England, and we will add, and Ethiopia. Now, little they say is known of his life and reports concerning him being largely what they call in term legendary, although frequently he is confounded as exampled by one particular British writer um, and so-called historian Gibbon. He's confounded with one called George of Cappadocia. He was an Aryan leader. So there's another George that people confuse Caduceus Georgis with, who was George of Cappadocia, the Aryan leader. But the real Caduceus Georgis, he lived at an earlier period than George of Cappadocia. He is said to have been a person of consequence, and he was born at Lydda, or Lydda, or Lydia, Lydda, Lydda, or Lod, within the Hebrew, this is a Hebraic town, or at Ramla in Palestine, or ancient Israel, the land of Canaan, and he was educated in Cappadocia, and he had embraced Christianity. What they don't mention in this particular um, Christian dictionary, um, uh, um, Christian dictionary, um, what they call the index or whatever, uh, of uh, what they don't mention is that St. George was a Hebrew, 
but as we explore this, we'll find this out that he was actually an Israelite, some say of the tribe of Benjamin. It said that he might be have been of the ancient tribe of Benjamin, but it's known that he was a Hebrew who had embraced Christianity just as other Hebrew or Jews, black Jews who had embraced Christianity. And he attained high rank under one name, Diocletian. Diocletian. And that's also an important name to look up in early Christian history in the Roman Empire and understanding how do we get to this particular point in time. And he suffered martyrdom in the place known as Nicomedia, Nicomedia in April of 303. Now his festival, according to the Roman uh, Catholic um, calendar, is April 23rd. He was extremely popular with the English Crusaders or the Black Knights, the black, the early Black Knights, uh, the Knights of the Round Table, King Arthur's Court. Yes, the Black Hebrews or Israelites are correct that King Arthur and the Knights were Black and they were Hebrews, and he was adopted as the titulary saint or caduce holy one of England during the reign of Edward III, although the Council of Oxford in 1222 had decreed that his feast should be a national one. He is also the patron of Russia and Portugal. This is, these are all places where the black Jews have been, and, and, and they have a, a strong, well-known history, and we can see a lot of it within the earliest Christian paintings of the saints as portrayed as black and as dark-skinned, Afro-wearing people. Anyway, churches and religious establishments have borne his name from the earliest times. He is venerated not only by the Western and Eastern churches and the Oriental churches, such as the Ethiopic church, but also by the Mohammedans or the Islamics as Gurgis. They call him Gurgis or El Qudir, El Qidir, El Qidir or the green one, El Qidir. And we know from Dr. York, Dr. York had um, made much mention on El Qadir and the connection with El Qadir and the angel, the archangel Michael, as well as Melchizedek, and he even linked himself within that that um, link of the Green One. So he's often called the Green One. So he's also known among the Western and the Eastern churches, and also by the Mohammedans as Gurgis or El Qadir, El Qadir, the Red Cross of Saint George on the white ground, on the white background, was long worn as a badge by the English soldiery and is now displayed on the Union Jack. Now, as we said, the real connection with St. George is through the black nobility. And, and we can see the same thing happening even within modern times with the Buffalo Soldier um, with with the great military exploits of black men in foreign um, armies, whether in the American army during the war, and they set a standard from that, a certain high standard of soldiery is established. And the same was true in the early days of Christianity. That's part of the hidden story of Caduce Georgis of St. George. Now, the story of the combat, there was a combat between Caduce Georgis or St. George and the Dracos, or the dragon, the Zendo, it first appears in Europe in the Middle Ages in what's known as the Legenda Aurea of Jacobus de Voragine. It may owe something to the fact that Lydda was near the scene of Perseus's rescue of Andromeda. Now, see right here, it says Andromeda. And now Andromeda, for those who know, is linked with ancient Ethiopia, you know, and the constellation, the Ethiopian princess from when we go back to some of the earlier history that were mythologized or put into mythology. So Andromeda has a link with uh, Ethiopia. 
or to an allegorization of Diocletian, of Diocletian, that particular, um, we could say, Roman emperor or um, Roman stooge as a dragon. And here they say to consult Budge, the book by Wallace uh, Budge, The Martyrdom and Miracles of St. George, London, 1888, the Coptic texts and versions, Fleming, um, St. George of England, New York, 1901, Huber, this is, uh, I think, a German work, uh, Zor, uh, Gor Gorgis Legend, um, this is 1906, uh, Gordon, St. George, London, 1907, um, Boulay, St. George, and Mary, England, um, 1908. And of utmost importance, they say, is um, uh, Delahaye's Les Legends um, Grecs des uh, Saint Militaris. I think this is a legend, uh, the Greek legends of the military saints. It's a French work, Paris, 1909. So this is just some of the basic, the basic um, information that's available concerning George. Now, as you said, the link with Ethiopia is very significant. The link with Ethiopia is very significant. And um, there's more that we want to share on that, but we have to get some of the information, um, bring up some of the information here. We have a couple of, as you can see, a couple of documents on our drive right here. Let's bring this picture up. Um, this was interesting. Let's see if we can send to this. Now, um, some call this these structures, La Labella, they either connect it with the Templars, the Ark of the Covenant, George, or the Gorgon, the Gorgon, Lucifer, or the Light Bearer, the Templars, and the Ark of the Covenant. And here they show the height of a person in in connection with this rock hewn this rock hewn church. Now we also have posted a video that was from the History Channel. Um, hopefully, I think some of y'all probably have seen it, where some speculate that um, the rock hewn churches was built by aliens or extraterrestrials. Well, in our comprehension, that basically proves the scriptural truth concerning the Melach or the Melaic or the, or the angels. In other words, what's called the angels in the Bible or the messengers. But they say that this was cut from solid rock. This right here was cut from solid rock. The church of St. George in La Labella, Ethiopia, circa, um, some say the 12th century, is said to have been constructed by, now, see down here, you see they put white people down here. It was said to be constructed by white people. Now, we're going to go into this because this is a lot, this is what confused people. Because people get lost in translation about these things. That if you look in the book of Enoch, there's a there's a section in the book of Enoch that has been translated by many translators where it says that um, Enoch saw some angels and it's reported in some translation that these angels were white men. They say white men in the translation. We saw this and we was like, what? So we started to, you know, we had to go back to the Gutters and the actual documents that they translated from. And now we're going to those actual documents. It didn't say white but it meant, it said that they were white-haired. They were like elders. They were gray-haired men. They were elder men. This is exactly what it says in the Gutters that was translated by certain white and European and white supremacists, obviously minded, because these scholars knew the language well enough to translate other parts accurately. So this idea that it was constructed by white men is false. In the original, we find, for, such as the example we just give from um, um, Haydnoke, and we'll bring up the actual verse verse, and compare side by side, go through the words, and people can look it up for themselves, that it said that they were white here, or in other places where they try to put across this false idea that they were European to say Aryan or European, so forth and so on, it says that they were white-robed. So this idea they were white, almost like a knight in shining armor, the truth behind it, that they were black men, 
you understand that they were black men who wore white robes, and this was the robes of righteousness, scripturally speaking, or that they were, as the ancient of days, they were white-haired, elder in that sense, elder ancients, as the Bible speaks of the elders. So this, quote, white people, end quote, needs to be put into its proper context. But the clear insignia of the Templar, what they call the double cross, can be seen on the roof they say right up here, the roof of the church, impossible to cut with hammer and chisel. George was cut by melting, some say melting the rock. Now, as above, so below, that this rock-hewn this rock um, sanctuary in Ethiopia, this holy place in Ethiopia, it also has its heavenly reflection with certain constellations, certain heavenly constellations, similar to how um, the Giza, the Agazi Plateau, the Agazi Plateau in Egypt also reflects the, the Milky Way or the, 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 the Milky Way above, the Milky Way above. And this is another picture which is interesting right here, St. George. And we call this St. George and His Majesty the Christ, as you can see, St. George. And notice how St. George in this particular picture, let's see if we can bring it, zoom it in so you can see. If you notice, St. George in this particular picture is white here. But the features are clearly majestic. The features are clearly Rastafari or Kedamawi Haile Selassie. And these were all painted previous to the incarnation and the birth of Lich Teferi, of Lich Tafari. So these are how those, that fateful generation, circa La Labella and circa those great builders who had direct communication with the true God and with the heavens, this is how they saw and how they perceived Christ in that time. So when we see the different images from different times, we need to ask ourselves, well, who drew this in what time, what was their influence? But what we find to be extremely interesting is that those who drew his uh, Christ as looking from our perspective in Rastafari Revelation, looking like his majesty, were of this particular Lalabella period. In the words that these ones who did these great incomprehensible feats perceived of Christ or saw Christ in the revealed image that we know of as his imperial majesty. So that's also another very important um, um, revelation. But the link that we want to follow up more on, and we just point those who um, – will study it and check it out for themselves is take a look again at the Nicodemus History Channel video, the History Channel video um, speaking about this book allegedly that they discovered. They discovered some, some book which they say shares some light on the 2012. And um, think about this particular picture right here, the link right here with this Sparing or slaying or conquering of the dragon. See, this this is some ages right here. These loops are some ages. And it reminds me of Ophucius, the dark rift between Sagittarius and uh, Scorpio. And they said that's where the position of the earth will be coming up in 2012, I think May May 21st, 2012, or something like that, that is exactly where. And what fits that now, Ophucius, is Caduceus Georgis. Caduceus Georgis is that particular link with Ophucius. So there's much more that um, there is in this particular subject matter, but what we wanted to do um, and share something that we did for ourselves is we looked up because we was curious about, okay, St. George, St. George, but what about St. George? In other words, what is the real connection of St. George? And why does his imperial majesty also regard um, St. George so highly 
in that sense. And the whole connection with St. George and, and the dragon and also the speech of His Majesty from Independence Day from um, May 5th, uh, 1941. What he says concerning the dragon, where he says the dragon again has risen its, its ugly head in these last days and time. What was his imperial majesty pointing to that it's taken us more than 70 years or for a generation to become um, receptive enough to be able to put it together. In other words, what his majesty showed us concerning St. George in that particular time. So there's um, much more to come, y'all willing. So stay tuned. So my brothers and sisters, Shalom Ras Tafari.